Okay, so here we are in XEdit on a completely blank preset. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is go to quick build and I'm just gonna drop input one and output one at the end and the beginning and connect those two. This is a shunt or a digital cable that runs all the way from the input to the output. So if we played now, we would just get a DI sound, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and start adding what we need. We're gonna have an amp, we're gonna have a cab. We're going to have a compressor for our clean tone. We're gonna have a drive for our lead. We're going to have a chorus on our clean tone. We're gonna have a delay for a lot of our tones. And we're going to have a reverb on the entire thing for most of the time. Now that sets us up with everything that we need as far as the effects. But let's get into dialing in our first tone. So the first tone that we had, and I'm gonna go ahead and bypass these effects by hitting the space bar, is our introduction tone, which was kind of a bluesy middle breakup tone. And I based that off of the Brit 800 based on the Marshall JCM 800. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and go into the amp block, and I'm going to select the Brit 800. I'm gonna run that pretty much standard, turn the drive up maybe just a little bit, and then go into our cabinet block, and I'm going to select the cabs that I like for that, which if I go into the picker, I'm gonna type in Rolla, and I'm gonna go with this pre-Rolla GB57B. Let's check out our delay here. I'm gonna go with the mono tape, I think. I really like the tape delay because there is a bit of a lo-fi vibe going on. If you check this modulation tab here, you can see there's a little bit of an LFO going on, a tiny little bit of depth here, and that is just making that tapey sound, and we can play that right now and you can hear it. Really nice sound there. I'm gonna take this mix down to 10%. Now let's check out our reverb. Got it on the medium room right now, which is the default. I'm gonna select the rich hall, which is a really nice sounding reverb. You can hear how that sounds. Pretty expansive. I'm gonna go ahead and take the mix down on that to about nine or 10. And so that's the tone right there that you heard at the very start of this video. As you can see, it really did not take a lot to get there. The amp is pretty much on standard settings. I picked a cab, I picked a delay and a reverb and made some very small adjustments to the mix. Now I mentioned that I'm going to make a preset that has all of the tones that you heard in the introduction video. And the way that I'm going to fit all of those different tones into one preset is to rely on a very powerful feature of the AxeFX called Scenes. You see the scenes menu up here. If I click it, you see I have scenes one through eight. Think of scenes like presets within a preset. They allow you to save the bypass states of different blocks so that for example, scene one could just be a dry amplifier with no delay or reverb. We could go up to scene two and have the delay and the reverb on. And when I switch between one and two, you see that those turn on and off. So essentially I am saving the states of the preset in eight separate states. So presets within a preset. But if we go one level deeper, we also have presets of sorts within each block. If you see on these different blocks, each of them has a channel menu here, and you see channel A, B, C, and D. Now most people are familiar with different channels on an amplifier. Of course, some amps will have a clean channel and a dirty channel. In the AxeFX, we're able to have up to four channels of amplifiers, four channels of drive, four channels of compressor, et cetera, et cetera. So all of the blocks have different channels that allow you to have four completely separate settings within each block. The scenes can then recall those channels. So we're gonna call scene one our intro mid gain. I'm gonna turn on our delay. I'm gonna turn on our reverb. And I'm gonna go up to scene two. This is going to be the lead tone that comes in later in the song. So if I go to this channel now and I switch the amplifier to channel B, you'll notice that we've switched to a USA clean amplifier. I'm gonna go ahead and select the shiver lead, which is the amplifier that I used for the intro song's lead. I'm gonna turn up the drive a little bit, 
turn down the bass a bit. And now I'm gonna go to this cab and also select channel B on the cabinet. I'm gonna go into the picker and I'm going to type in German and I'm going to take this German V30. I'm gonna unmute this second cab and notice that now we have two cabs running, the German and this 1x4 Pig 57. <laughs> I'm going to go into the picker and change this cabinet to another German, the German Boutique. And now these two cabs are working together. Now notice that when I mute one cab, the volume does not change. This cabinet mixer of sorts is normalized. So now let's take a look at our delay. I had a separate delay for the lead. So if we go to channel B on this delay, we now have access to a completely separate delay setting within this single delay block without adding a separate delay. So for our lead, I'm gonna go ahead and select the stereo tape delay. I'm gonna set this to 333 milliseconds and I'm going to bring this mix down to about nine where we had it before. And the last little component of our lead would be a drive. I'm gonna turn on the drive pedal in this scene and I'm going to select the BB Pre, which is a really beautiful drive pedal. I'm gonna turn up the drive just a little bit. Let's see where that gets us. Okay, so that's our lead tone. Now I'm gonna take a look at the amp here and you notice that when I go to scene one, we're on the Brit 800 and scene two, we're on the Shiver. Same thing with our cab. Scene one, scene two, our delay, scene one, scene two, channel A and B on each. So they are changing channels depending on the scene. So returning to our hierarchy, we have preset, we have scenes within the preset, and we have channels within the blocks. The bypass states and the channels are being switched by the scenes. And if we take a look at this block info, you can actually see when we switch between the scenes, the channels are switching indeed between A and B. So let's go up to our third scene here. This is going to be our metal scene, which is what happens when the big kick in occurs in the song. And for this, we're going to switch up to channel C on our amplifier and our cab. For the amp, I'm going to use my go-to high gain amplifier in the Axe FX3, which is the JP2C, based on John Petrucci's signature Mesa Boogie amplifier. I'm gonna go with the yellow channel, which is pretty high gain, and I'm gonna crank the gain up a good bit. I'm also gonna go into this output EQ and perform the standard EQ smile curve that everyone knows and loves from the Mark series of amplifiers. This really brings out the character of the amp. It scoops out the mids really nicely and really takes it into that metal high gain territory that Mesa amplifiers, especially the Mark II, are so well known for. I'm going to just adjust this slider here and now I'm going to go in and pick a cab. We don't want our Mark II running into a Pig 57 necessarily, so I'm gonna to go to the picker. I'm going to search for the Recto cabs. There are a lot of great Recto cabs, but I'm gonna go with this 41257B. And for our second cabinet, to just add a little bit of compliment, a kind of classic combo 57121, a very standard studio combination of microphones. We're gonna go with the Gent 121. So let's go ahead and take this bass down a good bit since Mark series amplifiers usually like to run with their bass pretty low. And let's take a listen to what we have here with our high gain tone. I have switched to my Majesty guitar, which has much hotter pickups than my Cutlass for the appropriate amount of shred. <laughs> So that's sounding pretty raging to me. So that is our third tone. Our final tone is our clean. So I'm gonna go up to scene four. I'm gonna call this our end clean. And this is what you hear at the very end of the video where I'm playing on my Valentine guitar. Obviously we don't need the drive there, so I'm gonna bypass that. We're gonna go to channel D, our final channel on this amplifier, and it's already on USA clean, and that's the amp we're gonna use. 
We're gonna go ahead and use the same cabs that we use for our metal tone, since this is based on a similar amplifier type. And I'm gonna go ahead and select a chorus for this clean sound. My go-to chorus is the Dimension One. I think it sounds really lush and very beautiful. And I'm going to add a compressor as well. I'm gonna go with this Pedal Compressor Two, and I'm just gonna leave it on its default values. Now this amplifier is very quiet by default, so I'm probably going to need to take this up a good bit and this as well to get it the same volume as our other tones. Sounds pretty good. And I'm going to actually bring this bass down a little bit and brighten up this tone. Couple little adjustments, let's see what we have. So what I am going to do is go to this delay and select our stereo delay on channel B for a little bit wider sound. Very nice. So with just a few clicks and really no advanced editing, we've gone from a completely blank preset to a stage ready guitar rig with some very diverse tonal options. Now there's one thing missing from our preset and that is a wah pedal. So I'm going to turn now to the floor and show you guys the FC-12 and the EV-1. I have connected my FC-12 to the back of the Axe with a standard XLR cable. It does not get much easier than that. There is not an easier cable to find at a gig if one goes bad. One XLR cable from the Axe 3 into the FC-12 and a TRS or stereo instrument cable from the pedal one jack on the FC-12 into the expression port on the EV-1. So what I'm going to do now is create a wah pedal in our preset by going to quick build and dragging wah one into our signal chain. I'm going to select the crybabe wah, which is of course based on the crybaby classic wah pedal. And I'm going to go to this control knob right here. Now this is the knob that controls the sweep of the wah itself. And I want to connect that to our pedal. It's very easy to do it. This little yellow circle means that this knob can be controlled by an external modifier. So I am going to right click on this control knob and I'm gonna set my source to FC1 pedal one, which is my FC12's first pedal jack. And now I'm going to go to auto engage and set this to medium speed. What this is going to do is allow the wah pedal to turn on and off simply by moving the pedal off of the bottom most position. So if I now move my EV1, you see on screen that the yellow dot here moves and the wah pedal is bypassing and unbypassing when I move the pedal. Now when I return to the bottom of the pedal, it hangs out for a second before turning off so that I can have some sweeping action without the wah clicking off. If you find the wah is clicking off too quickly or too slowly, you can select either fast or slow speeds Medium works pretty well for me. So now we're going to go to our second scene where the lead is and check out how our wah sounds. Really nice wah tone there. Now keep in mind, this wah pedal is turned on and off by moving the pedal itself. So we could go to any scene in this preset and use the wah pedal there. Now when you first power on your FC-12, you're going to see this first default layout which shows you only presets along the bottom. So I'm going to perform the rock stomp to access the master layout menu, which means I'm gonna put my heel on the bottom right button and just hold it down and then click the top right button while I'm holding down that bottom right one. And I now have a menu where I can select from different layouts and I'm gonna to go to the perform one layout. I now have my four scenes across the bottom. So let's listen to what we have here. <laughs>
So I hope this video has made it clear just how easy it is to not only dial in, but also control an incredible array of tones with the Axe FX3. We created a fully switchable guitar rig with a full complement of effects in about the same amount of time it takes to heat up a tube amplifier and tune a couple of guitars, and we did it completely from scratch. Again, there have been many, many times where I've pulled up a factory preset, not changed a thing, and hit record. The Axe FX3 paired with an FC12 and an EV1 truly is the most powerful, the most versatile, the most compact guitar rig on the planet, and I really encourage you guys to check it out. If you do get a chance to check out the Axe FX3, please let me and G66 know what you think in the comments below. And for all things Fractal related, Keep it right here on G66. I'm Cooper Carter. Until next time, take care.